Welcome students. I think you enjoyed the lesson tip to Uti. In this lesson, Merlin writes a letter to her friend Mali describing the experience of Uti trip. In today's class, we are going to see the textual exercises of this lesson. First of all, shall we deal with vocabulary section? Okay, what is vocabulary? Vocabulary is all about words. It helps us enrich our language. Vocabulary means sotkalanchiyam. You know it very well. Are you ready to enrich yourself? In this exercise, we complete the words by reading their meaning. Do you know the word that has the meaning eye-catching? Eye-catching means kannai kavahindra. Can you guess the word that has this meaning? Yes, you are right. The word is spectacular. Can you spell the word after me? Yes, P. E, C, T, A, C, U, L, A, R. Spectacular. Number two, thrilled. The given meaning is thrilled. Thrilled means silirputum. Can you guess the word which has this meaning? Yes, it's right. The word is excited. Spell the word after me. E, X, C, I, T, E, D. Excited. Number three, tasty. What's the word which has the meaning tasty? Tasty means suvayana. Can you guess the word? Which has this meaning? Yes, that's right. The word is delicious. Spell the word delicious after me. D E L I C I O U S. Yes, delicious. Number four, shout. Can you guess the word which means shout? Shout means alaral. Alladhe kuchal. Can you guess the word which means shout? Yes, it's right. The word is scream. Spell the word scream after me. Yes, C or E. A, M, scream. Number five, afraid. The given meaning is afraid. What is the word that means afraid? Afraid means bayanda. Can you guess the word which has this meaning? You are absolutely right. The word is frightened. Spell the word frightened after me. F or I G H T E N E D. Frightened. Children, we have completed the given words. Shall I give you a few more examples for practice? Number one, making a loud noise. Find out the word which has this meaning? Yes, it is trumpeting. Number two, gently to do something. Can you guess the word? Yes, you are right. The word is cox. Number three, moving slowly. Tell me the word which has this meaning? Yes, good. It is swaying. Number four, Yellow sound. Have you got the word? Yes, absolutely right. The word is murmur. Number five, dull sound. 
can you assume the verb yes very fine the word is thud children next we move on to syllabification do you know how to split the word into syllables generally each vowel sound makes a syllable for example cat pen sit pot cup in cat a is a vowel sound in pen a is a vowel sound in sit e is a vowel sound in pot o is a vowel sound in cup a is a vowel sound children do you understand next long words can be broken into syllables for spelling the words easily for example development d v l a m e n t intelligent in t e l i g e n t personification p s o n i f i k e s h n introduce in t r d u c e so what is syllabification syllabification is a process of dividing words into syllables syllabification means s o r k a l a i asai asai aga p i r i p a d what is the purpose of syllabification to improve reading skills to pronounce hard words new words and names to pronounce vowels to spell words correctly next we see some of the basic rules of syllabification the compound words should be divided in between the two base words shall we see some examples post box post box in the word post box post is one base word and box is another base word both together form the compound word post box similarly tea pot tea pot day break day break lunch box lunch box seafood sea food have you got the idea of splitting the compound words okay now we see what is next if two same consonants appear together split it between the consonants for example some some m big big g thin thin n happen hap pen appear up peer are you clear okay children next one is if a word ends with l e split before the consonants for example purple p u r p l e able a b l marble mar b l circle s i r c l e table t a b l turtle t u r t l e okay children have you got it next separate affixes that makes a vowel sound do you know what is meant by affixes yes you are right prefixes and suffixes are known as affixes for example unclear 
and clear. Mistake, miss, take. Employment, m, ploy, meant. Slowly, slowly. Thankful, thankful. Okay, I hope you understood. Next, there are some consonant clusters that we cannot separate. Consonant cluster means meyirutthukalin tohuppu. Children, look at the consonant clusters given in the bracket. For example, blow. In blow, BL is a consonant cluster. We cannot separate it. Drop. In drop, DR is a consonant cluster. Likewise, in please, PL. In slow, SL. In snake, SN. In chain, CH. In tank, TH. In swim, SW. In write, W R. In break, B R. In flower, F L. In prank, P R. In small, S M. In clear, C L. In sketch, S K. In what? W H. In grammar, G R. Children, I think you understood. Now we can see the textual exercise. Try splitting each of the given words into syllables. Wonderful. One, the, full. Behind, be, hind. Bananas, ba, na, nas. Excitement, ex, zai, meant. Snatch, snatch. Windows, win, dows. Ted, ted. Everyone, ev, re, one. Children, next we are going to listen to an interesting article about Uti. Listen carefully and answer the given questions. Udaga Mandalam, the queen of hill stations. Udaga Mandalam is located in the western Ghats zone at an altitude of 2240 meters. It is the headquarters of the Nilgiri district where the two mountain ranges meet. Udagamandalam popularly called Uti by the tourists is the queen of hill stations. Centuries ago this was also called Ottaikal Mandu. Single stone. Mand is a name of Toda village. The British started calling it Udagamand, coffee and tea plantations and trees like conifers, eucalyptus, pine and otal dot the hillside in Udagamandalam and in environs. Summer temperature is maximum of 25 degree Celsius and a minimum of 10 degree Celsius. During the winter it is a maximum of 21 degree Celsius and a minimum of 5 degree Celsius. 
this area was inhabited by the tribals called Toda long before anybody ventured into the region. Curiously enough, this slice of paradise remained unknown even during the periods of the great southern dynasties. It was the British who ventured into the region during early 19th century. In search of cooler climates, development and modernization took place after their arrival. This was the summer capital of the Madras Presidency during the British rule. It is the pride of the Blue Hills and center of attraction. This was formed by Mr. John Sullivan, the collector of Coimbatore in the year 1824. This is located in an area of 65 acres. Fishing was the major activity in this place. In the year 1973, Tourism Development Corporation, Government of Tamil Nadu, on behalf of the Tourism Department, took possession of this place for boating activity, which provides another thrilling entertainment for the tourists. Have you listened the article? Now, tick the appropriate answer. Number one, Udagamandalam is located in the Western Ghats zone at an altitude of option A, 2045 meters, option B, 2240 meters, option C, 2,234 meters. Option D, 2,040 meters. Can you find out the answer? Yes, the right answer is option B, 2,240 meters. Number 2. Centuries ago, Udagamandalam was called option A, Uti. Option B, Udagamant. Option C. Uttaykal Mandu. Option D. Mand. Can you guess the answer? The right answer is option C. Uttaykal Mandu. Number 3. The maximum summer temperature of Udagamandalam is option A. 10 degree Celsius. Option B. 21 degree Celsius. Option C, 25 degree Celsius. Option D, 20 degree Celsius. The right answer is option C, 25 degree Celsius. Number 4, Udagamandalam was inhabited by tribals called option A, Toda, option B, Irula, option C, Mand. Option D. Britons. Can you assume the answer? Yes, the right answer is option A. Toda. Number 5. Uti was the summer capital of the Dash during the British rule. Option A. British. Option B. Todas. Option C. Tourists. Option D. Madras Presidency. Can you find the answer? Yes, good. The answer is option D, Madras Presidency. Children, I hope you understood. Shall we go on to the next item? Okay, the next is describing a place that you have visited recently. Children, so far you have done so many exercises in previous classes for speaking skill. In this unit, we have to present our traveling experience. Traveling can help a person to understand and appreciate different places. Talk about the places you have visited recently. Listen to me. 
Here, I would like to give you a model speech on my traveling experience. Now, in your traveling experience, Patti, Ipo, Ungalora share panikre. Recently, I have visited the botanical garden in Uti. The government botanical garden in Uti has a great variety of beautiful flowers. It covers a vast area of about 55 acres. The wonderful arrangement of the colorful flowers is a treat to the eyes. The place can offer many good opportunities for taking nice pictures. The most significant attraction is the fossil tree trunk. It is estimated to be 20 million years old. It is at the center of the garden. I enjoyed my visit to the cove. Children, did you enjoy it? Ide madri unga travel experience patti unga friends kaloda simple English la solla try pannunga. Okay, now we move on to next exercise. Look at the picture of the village festival carefully. Talk about the activities that are going on by using the hints given in the help box. About the place and the people. What is happening? What do the children and the adults do? Kinds of shops, performances, village car festival. This is a Mariamman temple. It is located at the center of Eero. The Mariamman car festival is held in the month of April. It brings color and joy. There are hundreds of shops lined up near the temple. Many playthings are also put up. The people from nearby villages gather at the spot. They enjoy by worshipping the goddess. Moreover, they enjoy shopping a lot. Next, let's look at the language checkpoint. Here, we are going to learn the usage of tenses. Number one, we usually say, I have seen him yesterday, but it's wrong. We have to say, I saw him yesterday. The reason is, the present perfect is a present tense. It cannot be used with adverbs of past time like yesterday, last week. Number two, we normally say, I will call you when dinner will be ready. The sentence is wrong. We have to say, I will call you when dinner is ready. The reason is, when the verb in the main class is in the future tense, the verb in the subordinate class should be in the present and not in the future. Number three, we say, I am getting up every day at 6 a.m. The sentence is wrong. We have to say, I get up every day at 6 a.m. The reason is, habitual action should be in simple present tense. Habitual action means balakamana sail particle. Number four, we say, I am thinking it's an interesting book. The sentence is also not correct. We have to say, I think it's an interesting book. The reason is, when using think to express an opinion, do not use the continuous form of the verb. Are you clear? Okay, shall we look at the exercise for enriching writing skill? Now, we are going to see about letter writing. Letter writing is an art. It is used to express our thoughts and feelings. There are two types of letters. One is formal. Another one is informal. Now, let's begin with parts of the informal letter. Number one, sender's address. Sender's address means anupuvarudu mugavari. Number two, 
date. Number three, salutation. Salutation means alaital. For example, dear father, dear friend, dear malliga. Number four, body of the letter. Body of the letter means tahawal aladu seidi pagudi. Number five, subscription. Subscription is last part of the letter. For example, yours lovingly, yours sincerely, yours affectionately with love. Okay, next. Number six, signature. Signature means your sign. Kai children, is it clear? Are you ready to write an informal letter? Okay, imagine yourself as Rosie. Now, write a reply to Mangai. Can you? Before writing a reply, keep the following elements in your mind. Sender's address, date, salutation, body of the letter, subscription and signature. Now, I am going to give you a model reply. 72 Car Street, E Road 1, 15th July 2020. Dear Mangai, how are you? I am fine. I feel so happy after receiving your letter. I hope that you are comfortable there. I miss you so much. I would like to hear the story of Uti. Please share with me in the next letter. Convey my regards to all. Yours lovingly, Rosie. Keeping this as a model, try to write a reply on your own. Before concluding, let's recall what we have learnt in today's class. We have completed the words by reading their meaning. Syllabification. You have learnt how to split the words into syllables. You have listened to the audio of the article read by the teacher and responded. You have shared your travel experience with your friends. You have described the given picture using the help box. You have learnt how to rectify the common errors in the usage of tense. You have learnt how to write an informal letter. Thank you children.